Connecticut's Department of Environmental Protection has a fairly new face and a renewed mission. Governor Rell named Amy Morella as DEP Commissioner in September. We are happy to have her here now to learn a little bit more about you and about your new mission. Uh, welcome. Thank you. So tell us, um, you heard Ed Haberach, the first uh, selectman from Stonington, talking about some of his concerns about the environmental impact after this recent flooding. What, what are you keeping an eye on down there? Oh, a lot of things. Um, our staff were at the Emergency Operations Center during the event, and our staff were also monitoring the flooding um, at dams because we have concerns about state-owned dams and also others that are privately owned. Um, since the event occurred, we've been working closely with municipalities when they've had concerns about contamination, as was just mentioned. We have staff working on that. We're also going out and looking at the dams. We're also coordinating with the publicly owned treatment works, the sewage treatment plants, who are trying to recover from all the water that impacted their systems. So aside from those unexpected um, events such as that, what do you think the biggest issues are that are facing the state environmentally? You know, um, we continue to make strides in protecting our air, our water, and our lands, but there's always new challenges. So I think what's particularly unique about right now is we at the agency are trying to make sure that we deliver efficient service for the, the dollars that the state taxpayers have given us. Right. So um, we've been working very hard to see how we can do our job more efficiently um, and be able to do more with the staff that we have. Right, and I know that you guys get beat up a lot sometimes. Um, we had George Lacoste a builder on last week and he talked about um, streamlining how there's sometimes when he's developing projects there can be 50 places that he literally 50 mm -hmm. places that he has to go I mean talk a little bit more about ways that you've um, made getting permitting and processing more efficient because I, I had some uh, facts that you sent over and it was really remarkable I mean 50 to 80 percent uh, reductions in times yeah. on some things you know there's this extraordinary technique called lean which manufacturers have been doing for years and has been brought into an office environment um, and we've been doing it now for for almost two years, um, and we've had terrific results. Our own staff are the ones who are put into teams, they're given a week, and they're the ones who come up with the ideas about how they can maintain the environmental standards but be more efficient. And they've had, as you mentioned, just tremendous success. They've got better applications, more clear directions, they're figuring out when they're wasting their time and, and eliminating that wasted time, right. and it's been a great result. But you do, I mean, as I mentioned to Mr. Lacava, I mean, to me, it's a complicated process. You want to make sure that you are doing things correctly, properly, environmentally, and otherwise. And so you don't want to rush through it. So it's, a, it's kind of a fine line. You're trying to be uh, expedient, but still uh, making sure that we're following the guidelines, right? And, and absolutely. The beginning of this lean exercise is we maintain the environmental standards and the quality of our review. It's just if we can do it a little bit more faster. And one of the things is to be very conscious of is you don't leave things in, a, in your inbox. You know, <laughs> you deal with them as they come in. I mean, there are simple things that we can do to be more efficient. And even uh, not only for businesses, but for residents. I, I read about um, the e-government program, so, you know, a guy can get a fishing license mm -hmm. online. Talk about some of those efforts. So certainly we have this new electronic age and we're trying to make it more easy for people to access information. We have a new website um, and on that we've put a lot of materials for people and we're trying to make it possible for sportsmen to buy their licenses online for um, Go, any entity that needs a permit from us, whether it be a municipality or a business, that they can go ahead and get information about that at their convenience on the website. Are you finding that people are taking advantage of that? or Absolutely, yes. It's very helpful. And one of the new things that we're working on through our partner at, at the federal level, level, the EPA, is to figure out how people can submit information to us. And that's the next step. First, we provide information. Then how do we let them submit it to us electronically? Submit information. Oh, I see. Okay, what you're saying. Um, do you think that we, Connecticut, is an environmentally friendly state? Oh, absolutely. I think the state has been a leader on environmental issues uh, since the 1960s. Do you think that the residents, though, support, support your efforts? Certainly what I've heard is, yes, they do. I mean, everybody wants it done in a cost-effective manner. I absolutely understand that. And a lot of environmental protection these days is not about controls on manufacturers. It's about preventing the waste, helping them to save money so they're not producing environmental waste in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's looking at things like um, smart growth and the way we uh, develop as a state so we can protect our open spaces and use our cities that may have brownfields 
effect, effectively and efficiently. Right. Let's talk about something uh, a little more fun, perhaps, and that's sure. uh, the No Kids Left Inside program right. and your efforts to um, engage children and their families in the park system. Yeah, this was something that was started by our prior commissioner, Gina McCarthy. She realized that kids just weren't getting outdoors anymore. And, you know, there's two problems with that. First of all, outdoors is a lot of fun. <laughs> so we want kids out there. We want them to experience fishing, canoeing, hiking. And the other thing is, is you only appreciate the outdoors if you've actually been there. Yeah. And if you spend all your time in front of a TV or computer, you just don't know how great it is. So um, she started that, and it's been a great success. We try to offer opportunities for families to get outdoor at every opportunity. And I did see um, in a story that we had done uh, recently, there are some uh, cost increases, though, for, for our parks this, yes. this summer, which is unfortunate for families. Talk about why that decision had to be made. Um, <clears throat> well, the, in the budget that was passed uh, for the biennial, the two years, there was an increase of all fees that were under $150. Our fees, both our sportsman licenses and our parks fees, are all under 150 way under 150 yeah. So they were subject to that doubling. We hope people will realize that it's still good value. And uh, you, uh, as I made allusion to earlier, you are a former elected official, your first selectman. Yes. You were a first selectman. Talk about how you think that's helping you to do a good job at the DEP. Well, um, you know, there are many things that you bring to the job. One of the things that I think is helpful is I work often with first selectmen. Uh, they have a lot of responsibility in this state, and they have a lot of responsibility for how the state grows, and they get environmental permits too. They have transfer stations, et cetera. So um, my relations with them, my understanding of the challenges they face is, I think, helpful. Um, and I also think that the wide range of what you face as a first selectman is akin to the wide range of things that you face as a commissioner of DEP. You never know what's coming through the door. All right. Well, we are hearing some very good things about your work there, and we congratulate you. Thank you very thank much. Thanks, Amy. Amy Morella, commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection. We thank her. Ahead, the champs return, but is their dominance bad for the game? We debate that question coming up.